So in the previous lectures, we have learned what the kernel density estimator is and we have learned the underlying theory as well. Uh, we have derived this gradient and we learned that the gradient is proportional uh, to the mean shift vector. And uh, in the mean shift clustering algorithm, we use a mean shift vector uh, to cluster any underlying data set. And we also had learned the underlying concept of like how computing the gradient at a particular point and moving the direction of gradient uh, leads to finding modes and then finding modes leads to the clustering of the uh, data set by associating the points that data set uh, with the modes that they converge to we get the clustering as well of the underlying data set. So, so this much we have learned in the previous lectures. Now to formally begin with the mean shift uh, algorithm as a clustering algorithm as an algorithm that is used to uh, smooth images and preserve edges as well. So previously in this lecture uh, we have learned uh, the algorithms for uh, image smoothing via edge preservation and there we learn particularly the bilateral filter and uh, the Kowahara filter. Uh, but mean shift algorithm can just as well be used to smooth the data with edge preservation and in this case in particular image smoothing via edge preservation. So mean shift algorithm is also one of the algorithms to smooth images uh, while preserving its edges. Uh, furthermore, we will also be discussing the mean shift uh, algorithm as an image segmentation algorithm and then mean shift algorithm as a generalized uh, data clustering algorithm. And the underlying fundamental mathematical concepts in the, in the underlying equations that allow us to do that we have learned uh, in the previous lectures pertaining to the kernel density estimator. So in this lecture, we will begin with a formal graphical summary of the mean shift algorithm Again, some of which has already been covered in the previous lectures, but for the sake of completeness, we'll again resummarize so that uh, you have a fresh understanding of uh, how the mean shift algorithm works and how is it different from the other clustering algorithms uh, typically used in the machine learning uh, literature, like the k-means clustering algorithm. Uh, so, let's assume we have a data set uh, with m data points, uh, xi, where each of the xi is an n-dimensional real vector. Uh, so this data set is generated using the underlying probability density function p of x which is unknown so we do not have access to the uh, to the underlying density function but we have access to the data set that is generated via this density function. So one of the tools in the machine learning literature that allows us to approximate this underlying true density function is the kernel density estimator. Uh, so the kernel density estimator function f of x empirically approximates this underlying true density function. So here is the empirical approximation of the underlying true density function which we approximated via our kernel density estimator function denoted by f of x. And we learned in the previous lectures that by finding the modes of this, uh, of this kernel density estimator function, uh, we can cluster this data set. So now we will see, we will try to understand how is kernel, uh, how is mean shift clustering uh, different from the k-means clustering, although we have learned some bits and pieces of it in the previous lectures as well, but we will be, uh, we'll resummarize everything. So recall that in parametric clustering algorithms like the k-means clustering algorithm, so here is our data set D and we have plotted the points of this data set on this axis and on the y-axis we have our function f of x which is a kernel density estimator function. So, in k-means clustering algorithm, we begin with specifying the number of clusters, which is k. So, in this case, let's suppose uh, we, uh, we assume that we have three clusters in this data set. So, in k-means clustering algorithm, we will begin with specifying uh, some, uh, we will initialize the cluster centers randomly. And then, as the algorithm progresses, uh, these data points will be attracted to one of these cluster centers. So for the current iteration uh, at which we are associating these data points to these cluster centers, uh, these cluster centers are uh, local stationary points. So for this iteration, they are stationary points. And the association step, uh, we find out the cluster center for each of the data points with which they are attracted with. And we do that by finding uh, 
the distance of the data points to the cluster center. So, we, so for each of the data points, we'll compute their distance uh, with the cluster centers. And with every data point in the data set, we associate a cluster center that is closest to it. So in a sense, in the k-means clustering algorithm, we are beginning first with the specification of the number of clusters and we initialize them randomly and every uh, and at every iteration uh, when we are associating the data points with the cluster center these cluster centers are local stationary points for the iteration And then using the points that are associated with the cluster centers, we again update the cluster center by taking the mean of all the data points that got associated with them. And then we update these cluster centers or the temporary stationary points. Uh, which are the temporary stationary points. at every iteration of the k-means clustering algorithm. So these stationary points actually change, but the number of clusters that we began with, it never changes as the k-means clustering algorithm progresses. And then when the algorithm converges, we will have these, uh, these cluster centers or temporary stationary points converging to some stationary point based on uh, what local minima the algorithm converges to. So finally, these temporary stationary points converge to the respective stationary points based on what local minima the algorithm converge to, which will also depend on the starting point, like how we initialized uh, the clusters initially um, uh, when the algorithm uh, began. Whereas in the mean shift clustering algorithm, we begin with every point being their own cluster. So in the mean shift clustering algorithm, we do not specify the number of clusters. And at the beginning of the algorithm, every data point is their own cluster. So we have cluster C1, we have cluster C2, so on. We have M data points. So we have cluster CM. And then as the algorithm progresses, each of the data points give up their cluster identity and then they merge with the identity of the mode that attracts this data points. So finally, uh, each of these data, as the algorithm progresses, so at the beginning of the algorithm, we have M clusters. And now after one iteration, we'll have some M1 number of clusters where M1 is perhaps less than M. So the way we do it is that at every data point, let's suppose we have this data point and this data point is going to be attracted to this mode. So the way we, we find uh, the mode or the stationary point uh, that attracts this data point is that we compute the gradient at this point. So the gradient will point in this direction because in this direction, the uh, density increases. So when the algorithm began, this point, its estimated uh, mode was itself. And as the algorithm progresses by following the gradient, finally, we are able to find the mode that attracts this data point in the cluster or the stationary point that attracts this data point in the data set. Similarly, for every data point, uh, we start by assuming that that data point is its own cluster uh, center. Uh, and then we follow the gradient of the uh, kernel density estimate of function where the, where the gradient is proportional to the mean shift vector. So from every data point, we follow the mean shift vector. And then we find finally the stationary point uh, 
that attracts those data points. So as the algorithm progresses, each of these data points will give up their cluster identity and will assume the identity of the cluster associated with this mode over here. So if we follow the gradient or the mean shift vector from each of these uh, data points uh, within this region, then they, are, then they all will be attracted to this stationary point, which is a mode of the kernel density estimator function. Similarly, in this region, all the points will be attracted to this stationary point, which is another mode of the kernel density estimator function. And similarly, all the points in this region will be attracted to this stationary point, which is the mode of the kernel density estimator function fx. So in the k-means clustering algorithm, we specify the number of clusters, whereas in the mean shift clustering algorithm, we do not specify the number of clusters. So in the, in the k-means clustering algorithm, at the beginning, there are k clusters. In the beginning here, we have m clusters. Because each of the data point uh, can be assumed to be uh, its own cluster. Now, as the algorithm progresses, uh, here, the cluster centers at every iteration in the k-means algorithm serve as a temporary stationary point. And these temporary stationary points will change uh, in the next iterate and they will converge to final stationary points uh, depending on what local maxima the k-means clustering algorithm converts to. Whereas in the mean shift clustering algorithm, the stationary points Uh, to which the data points in the data set are attracted to, these are fixed stationary points. These are fixed points or global stationary points. So in the k-means algorithm, we can uh, think it as if the target always moves until it converges towards the end of the algorithm, whereas in the mean shift clustering algorithm, the target for each of the data point, it never moves. Uh, it is a fixed point or a stationary point, the global stationary point, uh, which are the modes of the underlying kernel density approximator function. So these are the stationary points that are going to attract each of the data points in a data set. If there are uh, 10 modes, then there would be finally 10 clusters in the data set. If there are uh, five modes, then there are going to be five clusters in the data set. So we don't specify the number of clusters. Uh, these stationary points of fixed points are going to attract each of the data points in the data set. So in the beginning, we assume there are M clusters. In the end, the number of clusters, so in the end, the number of clusters is equal to the number of stationary points or modes of the kernel density approximator function. So definitely the number of clusters, uh, we are not going to find the global true number of clusters because again the kernel density approximator function is parameterized by the bandwidth parameter h which we had discussed in the previous lectures as well uh, but still uh, we don't have to specify the number of clusters and that's why we call it non-parametric clustering algorithm whereas in the k-means clustering algorithm we have to specify the number of clusters and these number of clusters are fixed they do not change the clusters do not merge with each other whereas in the mean shift clustering algorithm we don't have to specify the number of clusters uh, the number of clust clusters is ideally found by the uh, mean shift clustering algorithm and the mathematics, uh, the mean shift vector that allows us to do it, uh, we have learned already in the previous lectures. So now uh, going forward, we'll be covering three algorithms. The mean shift algorithm as an image smoothing with edge preservation. So we'll just write it over here. So going forward, we'll be covering mean shift as an image smoothing with edge preservation we are going to learn mean shift as image segmentation algorithm 
which uses the mean shift uh, smoothing algorithm as an uh, inherent uh, function and that's how we'll be covering this one first and then finally we'll uh, we will learn the mean shift as a generalized data clustering algorithm. The underlying mathematics that allows us to cluster data set, we have already covered in the kernel density estimator theory. Uh, going forward, we would be covering uh, the pseudocode of these algorithms that will allow us to perform these three tasks.